Welcome to Esports Hero Cafe, where we talk about any and all esports. I'm your host, Bowman Shoda, and today I have a very special guest. I have Brandon Nolte from esportsentrepreneur.com here with me today, and we're going to kind of dive into what his business does and all the different and, and the reason why his business is so important to the esports scene as far as growth and development. So, Brandon, how are you? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day outside, and it's great to be on the show. Nice, nice. I'm glad. I'm glad to have you on. Uh, I've been really enjoying being a part of uh, the different communities that you've developed as well, because uh, I've, I've learned a lot of valuable information. But let, uh, first, before we dive into that whole thing, give a little background about your yourself to the viewers um, and how you kind of got into esports. Yeah. So just a just a brief interview is I I'm the owner of esportsentrepreneur.com, uh, the esports professionals network, and then most recently esportsaddict.co. Um, so I got into esports, I guess, roughly three years ago. Three, I, I guess I started playing video games competitively about five or so years ago when I started college. Um, then about two years later, I joined a small website called ProGamerHub.com. Okay. Uh, it's no longer online, but it is uh, kind of where I got my start, and I started hosting some tournaments. I got the administrative type kind of uh, experience, started shoutcasting, uh, started doing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, then about a year later, I grew into wanting to know more about the business side. Uh, I had recently changed my educational major from engineering to business, uh, and I was really wanting to focus in on trying to understand more about the business side of it from sponsorships, management, coaching, uh, really trying to look at it from a top-down approach. Uh, and I started writing, I started, I wrote an article on how to start an esports organization. I wrote three three parts to it. Uh, actually, never finished the series because I then uh, lead it into launching esportsentrepreneur.com, uh, and then that's been how I got started, and now we're here. All right. Well, what is um, esports entrepreneur? And like, if we went to esportsentrepreneur.com, like, what would we find? Yeah. So esports entrepreneur is kind of the I, I claim it to be the business blog and resource center for the industry uh, when it comes to trying to educate yourself on different practices. Um, you know increasing your social media understanding, content marketing, uh, management, hiring employees. We have we have over 50 articles on different topics in the industry. So marketing, management, branding, financial, legal. We have um, two or three articles on different things about, you know, how to write contracts, you know, is is it, you know, um, an employee or is it an independent contractor? You know, there's different articles like that. So when you come to the site, you can expect to find pretty much anything in the regards to understanding the business side of esports. Nice, nice. And I know just, um, you know, I found your website as I was actually making my esports meditation series um, and utilized some of those resources there, which was great. And that kind of led into what you have now is the esports professionals network, which I know I'm a part of, which thank you again for the invite. It's, it's no, outstanding. Absolutely. Uh, but what what is the esports professionals network, and and what do you what are your goals with that? Yeah, so the esports professional network kind of kind of grew out of me kind of getting frustrated with the, <laughs> all the LinkedIn groups that are on. Because um, if you didn't know, there's like ten different LinkedIn groups, and they all have anywhere between three hundred people to twelve hundred. Uh, and there's really just uh, they're all siloed. There's no communication, mm. uh, and even on top of that, the com the stories that get told in there uh, or like I guess shared don't really have much discussions or anything like that yeah um, so what really kind of drove me was trying to have that uniform body where people are actively discuss discussing different things uh, they're networking because they're discussing and then also they're promoting their own products organizations companies achievements uh, and people can really feel proud about being a part of that group because of the atmosphere and the professionalism inside of it. Uh, that's one of the key nutrients to that group is that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of conversations about how unprofessional the industry is because mm -hmm. of, you know, doping or people got getting paid. Uh, and that's that's one of the strict policies that we have is like people have to be professional in, the, in this group and we don't have, you know, uh, a tolerance to it. So like, you know, if you're not going to be professional and you're going to be witch hunting people, you know, we're not going to tolerate that. Uh, and that's that's really what, it, what we want it to be. You know, if there's going to be a bad situation in the industry, uh, we can talk about it, but we got to learn how to be proactive about that situation. What can we learn from it to not do it ourselves? 
um, and really kind of lead things forward in a you know as you know thought leaders, if you will. Yeah, yeah, no, and definitely it, it's a little bit frustrating, as you said, to where the few times that esports makes national news or international news, it's always unfortunately negative, like match fixing mm-hmm. or the doping um, mm-hmm. and those types of things. And um, I can definitely say I agree with you that in voicing the frustration with that, um, I want definitely the news articles to start promoting the the wonderful sides of esports, like you know the the development of young talent, the development of not just players as as a career, but you know people um, like you and me, where we create content and there's shoutcasters, there's journalists, there's video producers all that it's it's very exciting and actually um a lot of you know and uh, to kind of stay on that topic a little bit you know like those types of uh clicks like i've heard talks like in the journalist world where certain journalists will literally tell like companies not to hire other journalists based on personal bias and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um regardless of the quality of content and stuff like that um and these like clicks or boys clubs um you know that have cropped up essentially you know how does that hurt development and growth of like up and coming talent you know i i think it, it really puts um an understanding to how unmature the industry still is um and i've said this probably for the last since i started esports entrepreneur like this our industry is at a learning stage you know i don't think that we're even three years from even understanding our growth potential uh you know we always say okay yeah dream big dream big you know we're going places going to be hitting that one billion mark um but there's so many gaps in the market uh when it comes to trying to understand that stuff and the fact that these boys clubs or clicks if you will uh are just there uh it, it really hurts you know those companies from really kind of developing themselves um because they took that that recommendation uh, from those people, you know, but then again, you know, maybe that's just kind of where things are at and how uh, the industry is shaping up right now. You know, I don't think that in two or three years that that'll be the case, um, but I, I, it, is, it is a growing pain. It's going to hurt no matter what, what the story of the day is, um, you know, but at the end of the day, if we continue to let boy clubs and, you know, personal vendettas, if you will, <laughs> Uh, hurt the reputation of other journalists or even players for that matter um, you know because it, it happens in the player industry as well because you know you could have one player who's been playing with this one team and you know these players want to okay hey we're going to keep him on his team so we're going to bad math bad math them to you know the other players and ensure that you know they don't bring them on you know that's not something that's uncommon you know they want to keep that talent inside their own pool uh, so you know it's really going to be hurting um, and at the end of the day, the companies, the organizations have to look at it from, you know, their perspective and say, hey, you, what value does that that person bring us? Um, and I think that's just going to be a maturity level that, you know, these companies have to take on is that, hey, what value do they bring me? And start stop taking really the reputation that, you know, someone else kind of, you know, hyped them up to have. Yeah. Well, Brandon, thank you very much for being on this show. Um, it was wonderful having you. Um, I'm really excited to be a part of you know the the, the little things that I am with your network um, and watching you and your 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 companies grow because um, I think what you're doing is smart and a huge benefit uh, to the esports community as as a whole. Um, everyone else, viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, as always, we'll have more content, more guests. Uh, but other than that, share, like, and favorite this as you all see. Fit. It and have a wonderful day.